Happy Halloween and trick or treat, ladies and gentlemen. Chelsea Football Club certainly didn't get a treat last night against Manchester United in the Carabao Cup tie at Stamford Bridge. Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to your match review of Chelsea's loss to Manchester United. I've got quite a sore throat. I lost it shouting at the football last night, but damn... Man United deserved to win. We're going to talk about why, and maybe Chelsea got a bit complacent. Maybe Frank Lampard over-rotated and made too many changes. Maybe it meant more to Manchester United than Chelsea. But I guess above all, Marcus Rashford buried Chelsea with an absolute wonder strike. We're going to be getting into all of that today in today's match review. But before, I want to let you know that this video is brought to you by Akatips. Akatips is a web-based platform that gives you the edge on when betting on football. There's no other platform like it for football fans. If you like a flutter on the footy every now and again, you can check them out. And guess what? You can get a 14-day free trial, so it's definitely worth checking out. There's a link in the description to get your free trial. Do it. Oh yeah, and I want to remind you there to subscribe to Football Therapy if you have not yet subscribed, because I upload daily Chelsea content. Please subscribe, hit that little bell notification icon, and why not like the video? to help your boy out. Right then, Chelsea won a seven game winning run across all competitions, flying high under Frank Lampard. Things were looking great. Man United did have a couple of good results, but generally they were probably still in the crisis, maybe? They were the visitors at Stamford Bridge and Chelsea were absolutely favorites to win this game. But if you look at the sides, Man United played a pretty damn strong side and they came with their pragmatic defensive football, which is fine, it made sense for them. Frank Lampard heavily rotated. Chelsea did look a little bit off it. Um, although there's a lot of talent on the pitch, I think Frank Lampard might have over-rotated a little bit. And I think there was a bit of complacency. There was a, It was a bit wet, but I want to talk about the players and the lineups and how things went in the game and that free kick. So let's open the analysis screen. Right, I've got the Who Scored match center next to me to show you the statistics of the game. As you can see, Chelsea were pretty dominant. Man United arrived, and as I said in the match preview, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to play a back five system, which he did. It was a back five. It was, well, the 5 3 2, but really out of possession. This was a 5 5 or a 5 4 1. Very, very defensive and pragmatic. But you know what? I can't criticize them for it. They know Chelsea have been flying high. They're at home. They attack well. So. You need a win, you need a result. Man United are not the Man United of old, where they can just attack, attack, attack. So you can't criticise Solskjaer for doing what he needed to do. What I can criticise is incredibly poor officiating, hence losing my throat from shouting so much at the football, mainly at the ref. And again, I can't really criticise it, but there was a lot of time wasting from the Man United players. But again, you know, I get it. It's, it's always kind of what you'd expect from Burnley. Scoring from set pieces, sitting deep, five at the back, wasting time it's it's really infuriating but if they need to do it in their current position they're gonna do it so dark arts whatever fair play united let's run through the chelsea lineup and look at the changes frank lampard made so he did stick with the 4-3-3 formation we had willie caballero in goal marcus alonso at left back and reese james playing at right back zuma and gurhi were the center back partnership Jorginho and kovacic did play Jorginho at the base of the midfield kovacic on the left and billy gilmore played which is lovely to see last time we saw him out on the pitch he was playing the Jorginho role this time he's playing more of an advanced central midfielder role, like he did in pre-season, we know he can do that. And the front three was pretty strong, it consisted of Christian Pulisic, hudson Adoy, and Michy Batshuayi. And then sub appearances from Pedro, Mount and Abraham when Frank Lampard was chasing the game. So for me, considering the opposition um, and wanting to go through, I think Lampard probably rotated a little bit too much. But it's not a slight on the quality of these players. It's more a chemistry thing about them playing together. When you need to unlock a defense or play against a team that's being pragmatic, you kind of want that attacking free flowing chemistry. So. Right, so Man United get their first goal through a penalty, and this is pretty textbook 
For me, I didn't see Man United carving open Chelsea in open play and scoring like a decent goal by keeping the ball on the deck. And they didn't. They won a penalty. Dan James, too quick in the box for Marcus Alonso, concedes a penalty. To be honest, if you're going to predict a goal before the game happens, this is the kind of thing you can just see happening. And it did. But Marcus Rashford steps up to take the penalty and he's been missing a load of penalties recently. And Willy Caballero is in goal, who's actually really good at saving penalties. He's got a great record, so you thought, mm, maybe. But fair play to Rashford, and fair play to Solskjaer for keeping him on penalties. He tucked it away nicely, quite emphatically, really. 1-0 to Manchester United. At this point, I wasn't really worried, because I was like, okay, well, this is how they score. This is how United are going to score against Chelsea. Through a set piece, through a penalty but you know just stop giving them penalties and set pieces and Chelsea start playing your game and Chelsea will win this game right wrong in the second half after a generally frustrating performance from Michy Vachroy for me he was annoying me he got a yellow card he was putting in a couple of like niggly fouls as well and I was worried that he might be sent off even he scores a brilliant individual goal where he sort of heads it past a couple of players well he does all three center backs and then he executes a wonderful finish to finish off a move and score an excellent goal right now you're thinking you're rubbing your hands together Chelsea are demonstrating their superior footballing ability when it comes to open play football it was a superb goal and Chelsea are starting to combine a little bit more in the final third but still even though this is happening you can kind of tell Chelsea have not been on the game fully um, Billy Gilmore he's so so small even though like he's a amazing footballer he was getting bodied off the ball a lot and I think it was about 17 minutes to go where Chelsea concede the free kick and Marcus Rashford steps up now where I was sitting in the east stand this game I was right on top of this and I was brought my friend to the football who doesn't really watch football throughout the game I was trying to explain some, some facts about the game or how things were going and I said oh this doesn't really matter this is like 35 40 yards out he won't score this he won't try and go for goal you know this is like a Cristiano Ronaldo sort of distance and it just even he would miss most of them it's not going in basically it will try and float it in boy I was wrong that is one of the greatest goals I've seen live like I said I was right on top of it and I just said what a goal I think most Chelsea fans did Caballero would never say that you can't really criticize anyone I think Frank Lampard said it's just a you know a bolt from the blue you can't legislate for that and I think that's what I said to my mate I said you just can't legislate for that it's just immense Fair play. And from then on, the game was pretty met in the sense of Man United had already been wasting time early doors after their penalty and they just absolutely, you know, slowed the game down, sat everyone behind the ball, tried to frustrate Chelsea and basically, again, the officiating was really poor. And, you know, the game kind of just fizzled out from there. Frank Lampard did make his free substitutions of Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount and Pedro. And Pedro was poor for me. But yeah, nothing could really happen. Again, there was no cohesion or chemistry on the pitch between the Chelsea side, and they were overly frustrated by the opposition. So congratulations, Manchester United. Um, they deserve it. They came with their only game plan they sort of could for the moment, and they're on a bit of a better streak now, and they ended Chelsea's winning streak. So you've got to congratulate the opponent, and goddamn, what a good goal from Rashford. Right, let's talk about some particular player performances and get rid of this analysis screen. Right, there's a few players I want to pick up on. I think Marcus Alonso was poor, not particularly for giving away the penalty. Obviously, for an experienced player, he shouldn't be doing that. He is a bit sluggish on the ball. I do think the centre-backs were okay, generally. Um, I think Gay was pretty good. Remember, they didn't score a goal in open play, Manchester United, so you can't really criticise the centre-backs too much. I think they played pretty well. Rhys James did demonstrate some great moments of strength. Uh, along the flank and dribbling up but it wasn't his best game but that's okay um, again he's a defender Chelsea didn't concede from open play so Jorginho and Kovacic were solid they weren't amazing they were very very good at I mean Kovacic started slow but towards the latter parts of the match he did start you know turning on a little bit and looked good but Jorginho was solid throughout Neither of them had their A game on, but they were pretty good. Billy Gilmore, I felt a little bit sorry for him. Did, you know, he didn't really get into the game too much. He is so good on the ball when he gets the ball and releases it quickly. He's very good at one touch. He did do a bit of that. But again, it wasn't really clicking for the whole team as best as they could. Christian Pulisic, more than his best game. I think he'd burn out a little bit. He tried to like dribble his way out of some situations. Uh, he did have one driving run, I think, but it's almost like he's, um, you know, emotionally, mentally and physically exhausted from that hat trick. And it was a bit of a, I don't know, a lackluster mid-game 
mid midweek game, and I think you know it wasn't the best from him. I think Callum Hudson Odoi was actually pretty disappointing. You look to him in this sort of game to do something, to, you know, to not necessarily be Eden Hazard, but that's the kind of game that would call for Eden Hazard to just go right. I'm doing something now. You can't demand that of an 18-year-old kid who's still kind of coming through into the team, but. He was disappointing. Michy Batshuayi, in open play, he wasn't great. He was conceding fouls. One, of, you know, again, the yellow card was probably a yellow. I couldn't see it from the stadium, but a couple of unnecessary fouls in between. Although his goal was superb, and that's what you want from your striker. If he's going to just do that and change the game for you, then yeah, a good game from Michy Batshuayi, and he just shows what he's all about, and that's finishing scoring. Pedro was pretty wet when he came on, to be honest, man. He didn't do much for me. He conceded a couple of free kicks and dangerous areas or conceded possession. I think probably that comes down to a lack of play time. Tammy Abraham didn't really get into the game. He didn't get a chance to really. Uh, Mason Mount was pretty good when he came on. He was pretty pokey. He did that recovery or he pressed and regained possession in his defensive third and brought the ball out. He looked pretty good in his cameo. But generally, Chelsea as a whole didn't turn it on tonight. Manchester United did what they had to do and they deserved the win. It wasn't really pretty, apart from obviously the magnificent free kick. But in terms of the game plan, they, they, you know, they dug in, they did what they had to do and they got the result. Chelsea got plenty of time to turn it around and ultimately the Carabao Cup is the, you know, it's the fourth best competition you're in. Lampard, you know, he says, look, we're in the Premier League, the Champions League. Fine, I get that. But still, I don't want him to take the Pochettino route and just disregard the cups because he should try and win a trophy. Anyway, that's the my match review. What do you think? I want to hear it. Get in the comments down below. Let me hear your thoughts and opinions on the match. Remember, if you like the content, please do like the video. And you know what? You can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram and if you want to join the Football Therapy Discord you're welcome to by clicking the Patreon link down in the description underneath the Acca Tips link. So that's it from me guys, you lot enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby